What up, players? We're about to stay up in this mug. Welcome to How to Paint an All Quiet on the Martian Front American Tank. So, we take it from primer to this level, which is base coats, a little bit of highlights, some weathering, and the wash. So the colors you're going to need at this point are as follows. Castell and Green. Death World Forest. Skaven Blight Dinge. Storm Vermin Fur. And AK Interactive's Enamel Wash for Interior. And um, also, you're going to be using, besides your brushes, you're going to need to get a little bit of sponge, which you can get off of most clamshells or uh, almost anything you buy with this uh, All Quiet on the Martian front, their figures, their um, lifter packs all come with a nice sized sheet of sponge which you can rip off a little bit from. So this is the one that came with my blasters unboxing that I did a couple days back and I just tore off a little bit from the corner there and that was perfect for the weathering. So thanks for watching, stay tuned for the next video and we'll see you in the next one. Let me know what you think and um, if you like the look of these tanks, I really enjoy them. I love building them and, p and painting them. And the 15 millimeter scale, I'm really having a lot of fun with. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Latest, players. Okay, players, let's get started. Here are the two test tanks that I'm using as, a, uh, as, as examples. So, I'm going to put these off to the side and... Take out the tank we're going to be painting. This is a Mark II steamer tank again from Alien Dungeons, all quiet over the marsh uh, on the Martian front. And uh, the first thing we do after building it is we spray prime it. I use a black primer to spray pi spray prime my tank. And after it dries, I'm going to take Games Workshop Citadel paints. Zoom in a little bit. Castellan green. Oh, you can't really see it on the cover there. Castellan green. Using my um, wet palette on the side here to kind of thin down the paint a little. Now, uh, an easier way of going about this would be if I had an airbrush, which I unfortunately do not. So, if you've got an airbrush, you're you've got this part easy, because for most people with who, uh, if you're painting tanks, you'll know that an airbrush is really helpful, beneficial. So, awesome game. I've been buying more miniatures for this, for this game, and uh, I'm going to be trying to play a bunch of games. There's some people at my local hobby store that are really into this game, so I'm definitely going to try to hit them up and see if I can get some games in with them. Kind of teach me the rules and everything. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I love the look of these tanks. They're very reminiscent of World War One and the, uh, the old War of the Worlds. Especially the, yeah, the tripods, the Martian tripods, it's like a mix of those two, two genres. I'm mixing my paint right now, I think I might have put a little bit too much water. Yeah, but that's okay. Yeah, it's also a great game, I think, because there's not many games that you can just... or, or miniature games, I think this is meant to be you know, a miniature game just like the other big hitters out there, but um, right out the box you could play this game 
and I know like Games Workshop and Privateer Press have starter boxes, but a lot of times those forces are kind of mixed, um, mixed points, not really ba balanced, but yeah, the great thing about this game, All Quiet on the Martian Front, is that it's it's coming out of the box. It's, re it's pretty balanced because both armies play completely differently. With the Americans, you've got a lot of infantry. You've got six tanks that you can build up however you want. And uh, I chose to go with the kind of uh, accepted standard of three of these Mark, I, I think they're Mark IIs, Mark II tanks, and three of the Mark III tanks. But, I mean, if you want to do six of each, then that's also open to you. And yeah, I just, I like the way that each army looks completely different. The Martians have three giant walkers, tripods, and the Americans, a bunch of tanks and infantry. So I hope it takes off. I hope it gets a lot of, uh, I guess more, it gets more business and popularity because I think it's a really interesting, interesting game. Easy to paint because it's 15 millimeter, so it's not as, I've, I've, I found painting, I've never painted 15 millimeter before, you know, and I found painting the infantry guys that it's so much fun because they go so fast, and then when I was painting these tanks, you know, they go so fast, so... Had a lot of fun. Alright, so... By the time you get done painting... Slapping the paint onto the center section here, the sides should be pretty dry. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back down the sides, and we're gonna hit them with our first highlight, which is Death World Forest. Now we don't want this highlight to be too obvious. So what I'm gonna do is basically just add a little bit of it to the wet palette where my Castellan Green is. So we get kind of a mixture. And then what I want to do is almost dry brush it on. So I'm going to take a different brush because I'm using... I've been using my wet brush, so I'm going to take a, a brush that can do this dry brushing. So for me, it's going to be this kind of stubby, bristled, old wash brush. And I'm basically just going to put a little bit of accent to the middle of these plates. We don't want too much, so I'm going to just spread them out, but we do want a little bit of a kick. Almost as if the light is hitting the tank at a certain angle. So we're going to try and leave the majority of this Castellan Green color underneath, but we do want to hit it up a little smudge. Hit up most of the the armor plates in the center with it and give it a little bit of pop. Again, if you've got an airbrush, this is going to be a lot faster. But I'm just going it old school. Right there. And now we're going to hit the top. Mm 
you can see it's it's coming on really streaky. So um, that's just because I guess the paint is not mixed enough. I didn't shake the pot well enough, um, but that's okay. I just take my brush and really just try to spread it out as much as I can. See, like normally, if you're dry brushing a model, the paint should go on almost, almost like a, I don't want to say like a dusty coating, but. You don't want it to leave, you don't want to be able to see your paint strokes, basically. No painter wants to be able to see their strokes on t the, uh, the brush strokes on the figure. So I'm just going to try to spread it out, smooth it out as much as possible. And there you have it. So in only two layers, because of the 15 millimeter range, you can really end up with a very nice, nice uh, model. What we're gonna do now is pick it up a notch and get into weathering. So for the weathering, we're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need a sponge, which you can get off of most, um, most figure clamshell packs. So for my sponge, we're going to use this All Quiet on the Martian front blasters sponge right here. And I'm just going to be tearing off a little bit of it. And right there, we've got our weathering sponge. The color that we're going to use is Skaven Blight Dinge. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to Take your sponge, and what I'm doing is I'm holding the corner piece in so that we've got this nice rounded off edge here. I'm going to dab it into the paint so that you've got a bunch on your uh, sponge, and then I just dab it until I don't really see it anymore. So about there. Once you've got it to that consistency or to that amount, all you're doing is you're putting it where you want it to go. So I'm looking for areas on the model that would have lots of wear and tear. It's kind of hard to get it at this angle because of the pipe at the back. Going back into our Skaven Blight Dinge. Dab off the excess. And yeah, don't don't worry if you can't really see it too much at the very beginning. Um, this gray might not show up on your Castellan Green and uh, Death World Forest as much as you'd like, but just keep dabbing away and eventually and get to hit all of the pieces that you want to. What I'm looking for is actually uh, putting these scratch marks on like the doors, where the doors would be scraping and scratching and people would be grabbing it, hauling it open. So that's kind of where I'm hitting up. But you can really hit any area of your tank. Don't forget, anytime you go in to put new paint on your sponge, you gotta really dab it almost all, all off before you go into your model with it. You don't want to put too much scratch marks over your model. I'm just doing some random applications, trying to get the majority of it on the edges of this door here, but really just letting it end up wherever it wants. Also in between armor plates is another good area 
to add some of these scratches in on these rivets and whatnot. And these giant welding rivets is another good place. So I'm going to just dab each one of these. And across the front, finally, where we've got our main driving compartment. And right down here. There we go. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take our Storm Vermin Fur. It's a little bit more brown than the Skaven Blight Dinge we had. And all we're going to do is a simple, like, over. weathering so we don't want too much but we just want a little bit of an edge over what we just did and this is going to be lighter than your escape and blight dinge so I'm really only applying it to areas that really get the wear and tear like the door the two doors any hatches uh, this top hatch here oh, I forgot to mark the center of the hatch So what we're going to do now is we're going to add some weathering effects. Now the first weathering effect we're going to add is, let's see if I can find it, it's called Enamel Wash for Interior by AK Interactive. There are lots of great washes you can use by Inter uh, AK Interactive. I found that this one is really good for for this color because it's already got a kind of a greenish color to it so when you add it to your tank it's going to really give it an oily kind of appearance. going to deepen the greens and the browns and it's going to tie them all in together very nicely. Perfectly for us. Right, so we're going to let this dry and when we come back what we're going to do is we're going to add some uh, grime effects and uh, also the mud that you see on my other tanks. So the colors we're going to be getting ready for that are AK Interactive's Streaking Grime and AK Interactive's Damp Earth. So once this enamel is dry in a couple of hours, we'll come back and we'll get those done. We're also going to be putting the transfers on. Um, actually, I think we'll put the transfers on next. So the uh, transfers that we're going to use for that are the Imperial Guard Cadian Shock Troopers one, and we're going to be specifically using the Spade Sign, which is about halfway down the sheet, and we're also going to be using the Alien Dungeon All Quiet on the Martian Front one, which we're going to be taking the uh, unit number in the American size style font over there. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.